Hello and welcome to Voice of the Covenant Bible Study. My name is Kathy Duplantis and I'm so glad that you're taking the time to study the Word of God with me today. Before we begin, let's pray. Father, we invite you and you hold the Holy Spirit to help us as we study the Word of God together. Lord, I pray for every person that's watching along with me, no matter where they are in the world. Lord, I thank you that together, through the Spirit, we're united together by faith. Lord, I lay hold on the promises for them. I share blessing on them as we study together. Lord, touch us, and we, re we expect to hear from you. We expect to grow and learn things from your Word today that will it, we'll never forget that we'll stick and take root in our lives and change us. And we pray this to the Father in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, this week is week four of my teaching on four steps to growing up spiritually. We began with step one, which was recognizing your need to feed. And step two was recognizing your need to speak like God. And last week I taught on step three, which is recognizing your need to be thankful. And the title of step four is recognizing your need to stay hungry for God. And this lesson is based on a chapter in my recent book, which is called You're Designed for Glorious Living. You know, if you're joining me today for the first time, I believe that the truths from God's word in today's lesson will help you in your walk with the Lord. And I hope you'll comment. And let me know where you're watching from. You know, if you're one of our ministry partners that regularly study along with me, I'd be so happy to hear, read a quick comment from you too. Jesse and I appreciate your faithful support and pray for you every single day. You are a vital part of our vision to reach people and change lives one soul at a time. Let's begin our study in John chapter 6. I want to help you to recognize your need to stay hungry for God. This is an important step for everyone that is serious about growing up spiritually. Now let's read John chapter 6 verse 35 in the Amplified Bible. This is a great foundation for today's lesson. <clears throat> 35, verse 35. I hope you found it in your Bible. Here it is right here for me. It says, Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. And he who believes in and cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me will never thirst anymore at any time. You know, many of us have had to deal with hungers of one type or another in our lives. But there is one hunger that should never be ignored. And that is the deep hunger inside every living soul for God himself. And although many people seek out religious tradition, worldly entertainment, or the wealth of this world in an attempt to satisfy themselves, nothing man-made can ever satisfy that deep hunger for God. And when you make Jesus the very bread of your life, you shall never hunger. That's his promise. We just read it in his word. You know, I used to make these uh, delicious praline candy, pecan praline candy, and each, it was so amazing, they were so big and massive. Each creamy bite was, you know, they were, were as large as my hand, and they filled, were filled with whole pecans from one end to the other. But before I hit my 40s, I could eat the entire batch without gaining an ounce, which I did more than I really want to admit. <laughs> but it seemed that once I ate just one of those pecan pralines, uh, sugar, it was filled with sugar and this deep hunger would come upon me and I would always plot for ways to get more. You know, I never realized how hooked I was on this candy until one day that I tried to hide them from my sister Christine. It was the last of my pecan praline candy and it was in a bag inside my purse in a Ziploc bag and I was struggling with the idea of sharing them with her. I knew that she loved them as much as I did, but I was trying to convince myself that she could make a batch of her own if she really wanted any. After all, it was her recipe. That's when I reached in my purse and gave her the entire bag. She thanked me, and as any good sister would, she offered one of them to me. Since that day, I've taken control of my candy-eating life. I found that I can no longer recklessly indulge without seeing that unwelcome bulge. Well, I've even stopped sending pecan praline candy to my friends because I was contributing to their addiction, which was equal to mine. They embarrassingly admitted to hiding them from others to feed their deep hunger for more. I thought I was the only one who did that. You see, if you have a deep hunger like that for something, it will become obvious to those around you. Now let's turn to Psalms 34. You know, Jesus is the answer to the deepest desire of your heart and the answer to every problem that you will ever face. Psalms 34 verse 8 in the Amplified Bible says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord our God is good, blessed, happy, fortunate, to be envied is the man who trusts and takes refuge in him. 
I am convinced that anyone who doesn't hunger for God has never tasted and seen just how good He is. Once you know just how good God is, you will want more. Let's turn to Psalms 42. King David recognized his need to stay hungry for God's presence and wrote about it in many of his Psalms. I love this one in Psalms 42. We're going to read verse 1 and 2. It says, As the heart pants and longs for the water brooks, so I pant and long for you, O God. My inner self thirsts for you, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? You see, the gospel is filled with testimonies of people like David that recognized their need to stay hungry for God. They had such a deep desire to be near Jesus that other people noticed. Let's see this in Luke chapter 2. You know, I want us to read an example about my personal favorite, which is Anna. She was an 84-year-old prophetess with an intense hunger to see the Messiah. Chapter 2, verse 36 and through 38 tells us her story. It says, um, and there was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of, Fer of Ferio, Feniel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old, having lived with her husband seven years from her maidenhood. And as a widow, even for 84 years, she did not go out from the temple enclosure, but was worshiping night and day with fasting and prayer. And she too came up at that same hour and she returned thanks to God and talked of Jesus to all who were looking for the redemption, deliverance of Jerusalem. You see, Anna stayed hungry for God and he used her to announce the birth of the Messiah. She was a prophetess of God to her generation. And I look forward to meeting Anna in heaven one day. And another great example that I want you to see this on our study today of someone that stayed hungry for God was Mary. This was the sister of Lazarus. She had such a deep desire for more of God that it seemed to frustrate her sister Martha. Mary totally ignored her sister's complaints as she committed herself to spend every available moment at the feet of Jesus to hear his word. Later, the same woman was criticized severely by Judas when she anointed the precious feet of Jesus with a pound of very expensive ointment. And the sweet odor of Mary's sacrificial gift was so powerful, the Bible tells us that it filled the whole house and got the attention of everyone. We're still talking about her today. You see, Mary was a real person who tasted and had seen the goodness of Jesus. She learned to yield to her hunger and for spiritual things, and it showed. The opposite is also true. If you have ignored the desire of your heart for more of God, you know, it's going to show too. If you are a spiritual anorexic, people will know it. And when you're weak from hunger, really, it's impossible to feed someone else spiritual food. You can't pour out to others if you haven't been filled up. I want us to turn back to the Psalms and read Psalms 105. Uh, when you eat from the banquet table of God, there are no limitations. If you're hungry for more, you just step up to the table and fill up your plate to the brim. This verse that we're going to read shows us how to stay filled up for God. This is Psalms 105, verse 2. It says, Sing to Him, sing praises to Him, meditate on and talk of all His marvelous deeds and devoutly praise them. See, God has an abundant self-serve buffet arranged just for you with a sign that reads, All You Can Eat. You don't have to stop until you're full. We're going to see this in Acts chapter 16. We're going to turn there next. You see, singing praise to God and meditating on His Word filled Paul and Silas with God's great strength. I want you all to see this today in the Word of God. It also gave them peace that was beyond understanding. It's just, it's told, we're going to tell just a portion of their story in Acts chapter 16, verse 25 and 26. It says, and, but about midnight, so they were in prison. It says, but about midnight, as Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and other pri prisoners were listening to them, suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the very foundations of the prison were shaken. And at once all the doors were opened and everyone's shackles were unfastened. 
You see, while they were chained in prison, they refused to give up until they're delivered by the hand of God and their victory was complete. What happened? Devout praise lifted them above the problems of life and into the presence of God. Let's turn back to Psalms 105. You know, I've traveled to many different places, wonderful places, spreading the gospel with Jesse all over the world. But of course, that always means that I've had to have packed and unpacked luggage thousands of times over the years. And although I try to pack light and get by with less stuff, my bags are always much heavier than Jesse's. I don't know why. But you know, I was so embarrassed one time when the airline placed a large big sign that said heavy on my side of my bag. I really hated that. But you know, in an attempt to camouflage my overweight bag. I bought one that had wheels. But anyway, there was always that moment when my gigantic bag had to be lifted, and that's when Jesse always complained. He said, he even, uh, you know, if he isn't the one actually lifting the bag, he always seems to complain and say something like, what did you pack inside there, a bowling ball? His bowling balls are so heavy, he just assumed I had that because it was so heavy. But he wasn't lifting it, but he still liked to complain. I don't know why husbands do that. Anyway. People all around us usually laugh, but I would, not me. Jesse loves to make people laugh and smile. But I, I just, when he said that, I just had to remind Jesse that I refuse to leave home without my indispensable necessities. You see, ladies just need more stuff. Many years ago, I decided to take his suggestion and pack lighter for a trip. I didn't even take that small carry-in bag on the plane take a small carry-on bag on the plane because, and that made Jesse happy, I don't know why. But he was smiling and humming as we walked together down the long walk to the boarding area for our one hour commercial flight, for flight to go home. And I'll never forget that day. And it's forever burned in my memory, why? Because we were stranded for nine hours in the Houston airport. All flights to New Orleans were shut down because the control tower there was damaged due to severe weather. And needless to say, I wasn't happy about being without my ne indispensable necessities. And I reminded Jesse about it the whole time. And since that time, I pack what I need and always bring a small carry-on bag with me and with wheels, and I refuse to let Jesse carry it. That way, I don't have to hear him complain about the weight of my travel bag. I want us to show you why I'm telling you this story in Psalms 105, verse 3. And it's so powerful because it's, it says in, uh, let me get my scripture here. It says, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek and require the Lord as their indispensable necessity. That, that phrase just stood out for me in the Amplified Bible. I let, requiring the Lord as their indispensable necessity. Just like those things in my carry-on bag, those are necessities that I needed with me, but the Bible is so much more. My relationship with the Lord is much more important than anything I own. He is my indispensable necessity, and I wouldn't consider doing a thing without seeking Him and searching out what He would have to say about any decision that I make in life or anything that I do for Him. You know, I want you to know today that your success in life is always directly related to the time spent seeking God, His strength, His face, and His presence. Let's see this in Psalms 105. We're still in the same Psalm, verse 1. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon His name, make known His doings among the people. You see, if you have staying difficulty staying hungry for God, this powerful verse reveals three essential things to get you started. First of all, give thanks. This may seem simple, but giving thanks is essential to beginning your quest for more of God. We're going to see this in Psalms 100. We're all over the place in the, in the Psalms today. Psalms 100 is where we're going next. You see, when you seek God in prayer, you have an immediate audience with the King of Kings. Psalms 100 verse 4 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and a thank offering and into his courts with praise. Be thankful and say so to him. Bless and affectionately praise his name. We read this verse last week, but we're going to go at it from a little different direction. You see, an attitude of thanksgiving opens the door and ushers you before the face of God. So if you're thankful, say so. Let's turn to Psalms 145 and see some more things about this today. Psalms 145, you see this, this, this is the second key to staying hungry for God, which is call upon his name. 
Psalms 145. We're going to read verse 18 and 19 in the Amplified again. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him sincerely and in truth. He will fulfill the desires of those who reverently and worshipfully fear him. He will also hear their cry and will save them. Don't you love that verse? That tells me that we don't need to be shy around our Heavenly Father. He is near to all who call upon Him sincerely and in truth. He will hear the cry, save, and fulfill the desires of those who reverently and worshipfully fear Him. Now let's turn back again to a little farther back to Psalms 103. I love this Psalms 103. It's so powerful. And it contains the third key to staying hungry for God, which is make known His doings. Psalms 103, verse 1 through 5 is what we're going to read the whole section there. Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is deepest within me. Bless His holy name. Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not one of all His benefits, who forgives every one of all of your iniquities, who heals each one of all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and corruption, who beautifies, dignifies, and crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your mouth, your necessity and desire at your personal age and situation with good so that your youth renewed is like eagles, strong, overcoming, soaring. Let it be known that God is a good God. Daily remember the wonderful benefits that he has given to you. Don't ever forget his promise to forgive, heal, redeem, beautify, dignify, satisfy, and renew your strength. You see, seeking God is never difficult when you start with a thankful heart, sincerely call upon his name, and make known his doings. And when we continually seek and require the Lord, we have his promise that we will find help well-timed help just when we need it. Now let's turn to Psalms 105 again. I want you to recognize that staying hungry for God is a vital part of growing up spiritually. Psalms 105 verse 4 says, Seek, inquire of, and for the Lord, and crave Him and His strength, His might, and His inflexibility to temptation. Seek and require His face and His presence continually evermore. Don't allow the cares of this life to distract you from your most essential need. This verse we just read just really clarifies that. If you're hungry for the presence of the Lord, don't ignore it. Be determined to stay hungry for God and seek His face every single day. And the more you get to know your Heavenly Father, the more fearless, confident, and bold you will become. Remember, you need to recognize your need to feed, speak like God, be thankful and stay hungry for God. These are the four steps to growing up spiritually that we've studied this month. You know what? It's been a joy to study the Word of God with you. I hope that you've learned some things. I want you to tell me and let me know, maybe send a comment to let me know that Voice of the Covenant Bible Study is helping you in your walk with the Lord. Let's close in prayer today. Father, I ask your blessing on everybody that's been studying along with me, that we're all learning how we, your desire and your plan is for all of us to grow up spiritually. Lord, bless each person as we've studied together. Lord, whatever they're confronting today, Lord, I pray in agreement with them that they will be victorious, that you'll give them the answer, exactly the word that they need today to strengthen them, to build them up, to encourage them in their walk with you. Bless them, Lord. Let everything that they touch prosper, be a blessing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray today. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I hope that you'll join me next week right here in Studio C for another powerful time around God's Word. God bless you. Thank you for watching today. I know that you have been blessed, and I'm sure that you don't want to miss any of our new content. So like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell. That notification bell will let you know every time we post something new. So like, subscribe, and hit that bell, okay? See you next time. Bye-bye. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.